Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So we're here in the dining room where I have a number of the cutting boards that I have made on display. And it occurred to me that I've never really done any sort of video or tutorial on how to actually make a cutting board. The process is not terribly complicated, but I've refined it over the last couple years to get it down to a pretty streamlined process. And I just wanted to share my results with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the steps that I use to turn raw wood into a fine cutting board like this. All right, let's switch over to the garage and let's get on with it. If I was a story to be told. All right, step number one is to cut your rough stock down to length. Step two in the process is to flatten your rough stock. Now in this case, I am flattening the long edge first and then flipping it on the side and running the board across the planer on the short edge. And that gives us a completely flat and perpendicular edge on the side. Here I'm using the paddles for these particular boards. Uh, they're a little bit thinner than the eight quarter stock, so it's much safer to use the paddle for something that is closer to that spinning blade. Step three is to use the planer to create two parallel edges. You put the jointed face down on the planer and then you plane the top side smooth and that creates completely parallel faces to the top and the bottom. Step four is to rip your stock to the appropriate width. Now in this case, I am making an edge grain cutting board, so I am ripping the stock to two inches thick, and that will create a final thickness of the cutting board of around two inches after you plane the final cutting board and sand everything smooth. Step five is to arrange your stock in the order that you want to, the final glue up to be. Now I am a fan of symmetry, so I end up making things generally even on each side, which you can see here. And this is the final pattern that I ended up with. Step six is to flatten one side of the boards that you cut. After you do the original milling, they have a tendency to release stress and bow or cup a little bit. So I run them through the jointer one more time and I mark the faces that I ran through the jointer, and then I number them, and then I flip them over and I run them through the jointer to ensure that we have two completely parallel faces for the final glue up. Step seven is to complete the final glue up for the cutting board. Now in this case, I lay all the boards out, and then invariably I forget to put some tape on the clamps to protect it from the glue, which is what I'm doing now and then I put glue on each opposing face of the board and I kind of rub them back and forth to get a little friction fit there. And then I will slide the clamps finger tight, make sure it's flat, put some clamps on top and the sides to ensure everything is completely tight and snug. Step eight is to remove all the clamps and remove the glue squeeze out that happened during the final glue up. In this case, I'm using my scraper. Step nine is to use the planer to flatten the cutting board. Step 10 is to square up the edges of the cutting board. In this case, I'm using my miter saw. Step 11 is optional, but that is to add handles if you like. Step 12 is to round over the edges of the cutting board. Now, this is technically optional, but I really do think that it adds that extra level of professionalism, and it just feels a lot better when you're handling the cutting board to round over all the edges. Step 13 is sanding, 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 and more sanding. I sand from 80 all the way up to 220, and I, and I use a little additional hand sanding on the sides and on the handles to ensure everything is completely smooth. Step 14 is perhaps the most important step and that is where we clean the board and then we wet the board to raise the grain so that we can do a final round of sanding to smooth the board completely. 
Step 15 is the part that is the most satisfying in my opinion. This is where we put the board in some oil and really get those colors to pop on the cutting board. Once the cutting board is sat in the mineral oil for a while, we pull it out, we dry it off with some paper towels and let it sit overnight so that the oil can completely dry. Step 16 and the final step is to add a little bit of wax to the cutting board that helps seal it. In this case, I'm using a beeswax and mineral oil combination that I made a video about not so long ago, and I will link that in the card above. And there it is, here's the money shot. This is the final completed board. We will let it dry for 24 to 48 hours to ensure all the wax is completely smooth, give it a good rub down, and then it'll be ready for the customer. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see, the process was relatively straightforward in terms of number of steps. However, it does require some specialized tools if you wanna to optimize the workflow. Obviously, you do not need a jointer. There's many other options there. In theory, you don't really need a planer. Uh, you can use hand planes to get the same outcomes. I will tell you, however, though, that having a planer is kind of sort of a, a barrier to entry to having a high, any sort of high volume or even medium volume manufacturing of cutting boards. Being able to mill the raw wood down into something that is usable, a planer is just indispensable for that. You can buy the pre-surface wood, what is known as S4S or S2S wood, from the lumber stores, but it is significantly more expensive. And so I find buying the rough lumber to be a better deal overall in terms of how much it costs, but also it's a little intriguing to discover the grain pattern, you know, after you mill it with the planer. So it's just something that I actually kind of enjoy in the process. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave comments down below and tell us why you didn't like it and we can make future videos better. And follow us on Instagram. That's where I post a lot of pictures of the projects I'm working on, many of which become these videos. Click the subscribe button, ring that bell. Very important these days to get notified of the new content we posted. And don't forget, as always, to be inspired. Okay, now that you have one edge, one face milled flat, one edge milled flat. Now it's time to use a pencil. Carpenter's pencil works well to mark each edge. So then when we run it through the planer, you know which one was the jointed edge versus which one was the planed edge. You always want to put the jointed edge down. <clears throat> Let me restart. You want to make sure that the good lord. Holy crap. <laughs>